What's up, everybody? This is the Jedi. I just wanted to put this at the beginning of the piece because um, I actually started this video on Monday. Um, and I just finished it today. Today is Wednesday evening. I also want to apologize for everyone uh, with regard to a lack of my presenting a review for the haves and the have nots finale last night. Um, I also think the um, the daylight savings played a role in that because I didn't know what time it was and I knew it just felt I didn't find out that that had happened until today. But I think that played a role. I was just too tired, you guys. I was too tired. I was too tired. I had a lot of work that I had to finish as well and I knew I was going to be up late anyway. And if I had done that, then I would have been up even later because, you know, I have to set up and then I have to do the review and there's post-production. I mean, and plus the uploading. I mean, it's hours. So I just apologize for that. Anyway, um, I hope you'll accept my apology on that. Um, but this is more important. I want you to settle in and listen to this, you guys. Um, you know, I always tell you that I am here to tell the truth for the benefit of our people. And part of loving anyone or anything is you have to be willing to tell the truth. So I can rant about this white devil all damn day. All day. And never run out of shit to rant about. But... I have to tell my people the truth about us too. And I have to call you to account. I must. I must. You know? It's like raising a child almost. You know, a child is, um, if you never critique a child and you allow them to think that everything they do is perfect and wonderful, then they, there's, or not even just a child, anybody. If you never critique anything that somebody does, they just assume everything's fine and they just will continue that behavior. You see, a new day has dawned, and it's time for our people to become new in this new day. And so I am always, always willing to turn the burning mirror at my people and say, look at your ass in this. And to tell you the hard truth, whether you like it or not, I have to do that. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't love the truth, then click away from the video right now. Buh bye For the rest of us, let's go into the information. The video will start as usual, and I will see you soon. We are in a race between education and catastrophe. The knowledge. What's up, everybody? This is the Jedi. I'm back again. And, you know, my last video, I said that I um, I was telling you about what had gone on at the Apollo Theater and how emotional that had made me and you know brought me to tears and all of it and this makes me want to go to tears for a different reason you know we are our own worst enemy we just are. And the day that we all agree on that, and not just agree on it, but are willing to actually do something about it, to make change, until that happens, we're not going nowhere, you guys. We're not. Everything that you can conjure will be a fantasy. Will just be a fantasy will just be a fantasy. Um, when I saw this, and I haven't read it, but I'll tell you what my first thought was when I saw this. I thought about Monique. Because we just dealt with, and, and quite frankly, are still dealing with uh, the crisis that she's going through with this whole Netflix debacle 
and then they roll this out. In the Netflix documentary, The Whore, her son says he resents some of mom's choices. Do you mean I do? Well, fake why bitch. Don't you just let it go away? When something gets destroyed, you have to rebuild it. You okay. can't just pretend that it didn't happen and everything gets fixed. It's not going to have to happen anymore. Why it's called you rebuilding. Just it's called rebuilding. This has been in some effect people for read, more than just your life. Some people read and say, yeah, what happened affected one of just my life. If somebody has hope, don't take that away from them because maybe that's all they have. Trust me, it is going to find me in the ass. Mm. This book coming out and this documentary might just backfire like everything else has backfired. I resent some of her choices and I resent some of the words she spoke in interviews. Your film. We're taking this risk. I'm putting my kids out there. I'm putting Esther out there. It's hard. Fake tears. Fake and crime, bitch. Be the gatekeeper and keep, and then you're just like handing it over to somebody Fake. and just like be a wrecking ball. Listen. She can identify whatever she wants to be because it's her business. But when it's put in the limelight, I don't think you should be pissing people off more than there already are. Amen. Unless you want to get bit in the ass from it. And she did not choose her words carefully. And it affected me, it affected my brother. The more that I hear about it, the more that I talk to people about it, the more it just drains me. What are my parents saying? What have they said? What don't people know about this story? Nothing that I want people to know. Okay, I think we like this kid. And you know, in what would be poetic justice, maybe, I don't know how many other kids she got, I can't remember, but that's one of her sons, allegedly, lying as whore. It may just be that he tortures her ass to fucking death. Because the, the, just that little bit that I heard there suggests to me a certain frame of mind, I think is, is the, the phrasing I'll use. You know? Like, he's not on board with this. And her body language there even seem like she's trying to convince him almost pleading that she kind of needs him on board that's what that sort of the energy sort of spoke to me and I think the fake little white bitch crocodile tears which don't affect me at all to me I translate that into first lying whore then also frustration probably because of this kid Probably. But you see, she's very dangerous, everybody. Very dangerous. And why? Because I've been telling you for the longest now that this whole interracial shit, she's part of it, I suggest. You know, this sort of marching to what I think will culminate in the new race. I can almost see it on the cover of Time Magazine or Newsweek or something. You feel me? Again, I always say you got to know the big three. Your enemy, your environment, and your condition. And when you understand that, and when you also add to that recipe, what I, something I also always tell you is you have to see yourself as not a part of this society because you are not. You are leftover, unwanted cargo. You're the same people that they brought here in the bellies of ships. The same ones. And they didn't have a plan for you after slavery. Integration 
was a coup for them because instead of us having our own everything and being better than them and them having to now compete with us let's integrate not because it's morally right because it's economically beneficial because I tell you they do anything for a coin they will step over their mother's dead carcass for a coin let's integrate now and now we get that bonanza from your dollar and we can still hold you out of the major institutions and still hold you back and keep you down while telling you everything is fine let's take off our sheets now and give you the fake white bitch grin now in your face and deny that there's any such thing as racism when everything that we do shows that we're obsessed with you and nobody else because she's not trying to be an Asian bitch I didn't see her trying to be a Latino. You see? Something else that made me sick in getting prepared to bring you this was I saw something, some of her old statements uh, that she made. Uh, she was speaking to Dr. Phil, and I'm sure she's made them in other places. But this is the thing that sickened me worse than I thought I could even be sickened anymore. And when she said, uh, First of all, she said race is a lie. And then she said race is not biological. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's like a double twist of the tongue because I can give you race, but then we're into semantics with labels. Because whatever you want to call it, melanin is biological, white bitch. It just is. But funny how race is a lie and race is not biological. So why did your white, blonde hair, blue eyed, freckle faced bitch ass, why didn't you start making these proclamations looking like your normal blonde hair, blue eyed, freckle faced bitch ass. Because it's not biological. So why did you need to go and do bronzer and blackface? Because it's not biological, remember everybody? And she's now transracial, fuck her. You see, we can't allow this, everybody. This is not like fucking Bruce Jenner turning into a goddamn woman. And I'm a transgender. I'm gonna fuck what earthly label you get it. That is not what Allah created. Allah doesn't create trans anything. Everything that Allah has created is clear in its identity. Period. Again, I always tell you, creation is not decoration. There are signs in nature. That's why God has created creation. For you to observe and learn. So show me something in nature that is trans. I'd like to see that. Show me a trans tree. Show me a trans fish. Show me a trans giraffe. Show me you, you, a, a trans bird or some bullshit. There's no trans anything. So we have to reject that. And whatever they want to do with this sexual assignment stuff and all this trans crap, fine. But bitch, you don't get to come here. There is no, you're trans, suddenly you're trying to be me. You understand? Nah. Nah. Because our people were here at least 75,000 years before your white ass showed up anywhere on the goddamn planet. And we don't know where you come from. So, we didn't have any trans anything in 75,000 years. So, this is new. This is from the devil. You see? It's from the devil. That's where it's from. That's where it's from. But I just thought the hypocrisy of that. You know. Race is a lie and it's not biological. Then why are you sitting your bitch ass up there in fucking Boderic braids? I'm over it. And by the way, Bo Derek was was called a 10 after the, she was a bronze bitch 
with hair that look like ours, then you're a 10. Hmm? But Latasha just walking someplace with that natural look, that's how she came out her mama, she's not a 10. I'm telling you guys, this is very dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. This is very dangerous. Um, let's look at some things real quick. Uh, in, in, in a Netflix documentary, The Whore, okay, her son presents his mom's choices. All right. Uh, the public backlash against this whore has died, has died down in the last two years. But there is one person who wishes it would stay that way, her son. In the trailer for his mom's upcoming Netflix documentary, Franklin seems frustrated at her decision to step back into the spotlight. Uh, the more I quote, the more I hear about it and talk to people about it, the more it just drains me, he said. Okay, that's what we saw him say when he goes, it just drains me. Like, and I felt him say that. It wasn't just, he, I felt him, I felt him when he said that. Like, he's over it. Uh, the, the, the whore made headlines in 2015 when her biological parents revealed she was born white, but has been pre, uh, presenting herself as, as black for years. The scandal led her to step down from her role as the head of the Spokes, Spokane, Washington chapter of the NAACP, I want to say two things. First of all, she said to Dr. Phil, when he said, now these are your fucking parents. She goes, I believe them to be my parents. She's a psychotic bitch, do you understand? And her children should be taken from her, quite frankly. Because she doesn't have these children because she wants to be a mom. She has these children because she wants black children. She, is, she has an obsession with African people, and she has a sick, um, some, some diagnosed word that I don't know is who is what she is. And her children should be taken from her, and she should not be allowed to have African children, period, at all. Because this is just the same to her as just like having black figurines around. Remember, race is not biological, everybody. So why are you bronzing your fucking white ass and changing your hair color? you see, and having black children, but everything that comes out of her pablum puking, vomitous ass mouth is as if everybody else has a problem, like she's, I'm just self-identifying what I, who I am, bitch, you are not, you see, but the other thing that, 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 <clears throat> that um, that makes me sick is that she was the uh, head of the Spokane Washington chapter in the NAACP, those people should be dragged and not surprisingly because I tell you it's the black Christians that fuck up everything for all of us in this country and they outnumber us 86 percent of African people in this nation are under that Christian vomit and everybody in the NAACP is that all of them all of them all of them and their track record from slavery to now is their willingness to go along and sell us out and coon out and and all the other charges that we can bring it's them you didn't know this was a white heifer when she first appeared i don't care how much bronzer the bitch puts on you know your own i do the I, the when this thing first broke two years ago when i first seen it, i'm like are you serious that's clearly a white bitch clearly because we know we know, you see, and if you don't, then you are a problem and you have a problem. You understand me? Now, let's use Jasmine Guy, for instance. Jasmine Guy is a very light skinned woman, but we have no doubt about who she is. No doubt. Vanessa Williams, another one. We have no doubt about who she is. We keep going. We know them. We know it. We, we, if they never said anything, if we never, if we just saw them in a grocery store, we go, "That's a sister. That's a sister." We just know. We would, I would not see this bitch and go, "That's a sister." I go, "That's a white bitch." Period. 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 But these NAACP types are the same as those ones who, after Dylan Roof walks into a church and kills nine people, they have a prayer circle and then they all march to the court and proclaim their love and forgiveness. 
you see this is the virus amongst us everybody and is and it's unfortunate as i say that they that they outnumber the rest of us none of them speak like this none of them have this heart none of them have this fire none of them have this philosophy none of them have this understanding none, none of it none of it none of it this does not apply to them and they're especially dangerous because this is the center of evil and this is the only place on earth where that vomit dominates our people it's a direct hand-me-down from slavery the truth is that most African, I've said this to you a million times, you guys that listen to me all the time, you should be sick of hearing it, and I'm sick of saying it, but most African melanated people on the planet Earth are Muslims, period. And I'm talking about the nation of Islam people, because they are not Muslims. We're never talking about them when we're talking about Muslims, always know that. They are not part of that, all right? Most mel African melanated people on planet Earth, no matter where we exist and breathe, are Muslims. It is only here that that doctrine uh, dominates our people and affects your character and 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 your your morals and your uh, your your principles and everything. You're the first ones to invite this devil in and let him sit at the table. Despite black backlash from the public and her brother, who called her appearance a type of blackface, appreciating, the whore maintains the view that she is a transracial black woman. Her case is, is one of many raising questions about racial fluidity. Listen, we're not having no fluidity. There is no middle ground here. You either are or you are not. This ain't like I was born a man, but I feel like I'm a woman or I'm a woman. I feel like I was born. Fuck all of that. You're either an African or you are not. We won't allow any middle ground. And we are the arbiters of what goes on because we are the Africans. Nobody gets to dictate to us that they're going to introduce some fluidity into our fucking culture and, and into our, our very existence as human beings. The buck stops right the fuck right here. Do you understand me? We have to put a break, put the brakes on this, everybody. The power is with us. Stop looking outside of yourself for the answer from the very one who is the problem to you on the fucking earth. This is a problem. And if it doesn't matter, then why is she seeking uh, socialization and relationship amongst our people? Let her take her white ass over to her fucking people. You can still feel, if you want to feel like you're a black woman and all that bullshit that you proclaiming, then you should be able to be that over there with your fucking people. We should give her no comfort amongst any of us. You see? But again, your character is jacked up, so you can be counted on to give her refuge amongst our people. Somebody will be sitting up grinning and cheesing with her ass. Probably already is, and we I just don't know about them. This is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. You know, it, it, it's a problem because it's like I tell you all the time. It, okay, who cares what this white devil does? What are we going to do? So this only becomes a problem if we allow her anywhere the fuck near us. Allowing her into the university. Allowing her to be a part of the NAACP. Allowing her to, you say allowing. She didn't do none of this shit without the help of some of us. So who really needs to be checked in this scenario? I ask you. Who needs to be checked? You see what I'm saying? Oh my God, I can't, y'all. Oh my God. I'm just, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just worn down. I'm just worn down because for every fucking case, for every battle, for every in incident or anything, you got to fight the white devil and you got to fight your black ass too. Your ignorance. <sighs> wow. This is going to give me an ulcer. I just know it before it's all said and done. I just know it. I just know it. But here's why it's also your fault. 
because the timing of this because too many of our people are too short-sighted you know this is why I've said to you a million times if you can't be bothered to be a Muslim fine that's fine it's very sad but that's fine if your bitch ass could at least cultivate the code of life that Muslims live by our situation in this country would change overnight you see because one of the big grand designs of that Christian lie is to suck out all character from you all fear of your creator all fear and awareness of the last day Christ died for me so I'm going to heaven and no the fuck you are not I'm so sorry you don't have to like it but it's gonna be the truth whether I proclaim it or not and you will know on the great day if you don't find out before that you will know you will have a rude awakening you will have a rude awakening Christ ain't died for nobody and ain't nobody died for your ass you understand nobody so you don't have for Muslims it's we have a duty to each other first that's the way God intended for all mankind to be and those who submit to what God wants are called Muslims you see those who reject and add partners and offsprings and bullshit those are called Christians you see even the Jews are, are, are well they, we call them our cousin the Orthodox Jew not the Zionist people but even the Orthodox Jew who is the who is the cousin to the Muslim you don't see them acting out the way the Christian does either and there is a code by which they live and get along with one another they value their brother and their sister first simply because they are Jews same with the Muslim we value look out and protect one another simply because we are Muslim simply because we are Muslim because that's what God has ordained now even with my Muslim brothers and sisters I could just be in the market and I may see somebody I don't know if they're Muslim or not unless it's one of our women and she's dressed properly then I know it's a Muslim sister but a brother I may not know he's Muslim and he could be Asian he could be Asian he could be white he could be African he could be Arab he could be anything so until we speak and I find oh you are oh alhamdulillah you're salam alaikum but your black ass and my black ass there's no figuring out no guessing to do we see this we go that's mine that's mine and so therefore we should look out for each other immediately based on that so why I bring that now is because the Monique thing as I said to you then just the fact that Monique is our sister you don't need to know any detail you saw her proclaiming and begging for support from her people and she's a woman at that that takes it up even another notch of responsibility because it's one of our women it's one of our women so if you were not if you were in the right frame of mind and in the right if you had the proper character and you were someone who knew your creator and you had a code of life to live by that's all you needed okay next I just do mouse click and go and click away from Netflix no more done I hope it helps my sister and move move on with your fucking life but your black ass has to make a federal case out of trying to not do what's right you're looking for a reason not to support your sister and let me demonize her and shit this is about her and it's for her and it's a do the fuck you you're the same bitch that will walk out of a grocery store with a full basket and see somebody homeless and then you're gonna judge them for what they might do with the money instead of just handing the fucking money over and put that in the hands of the creator and let their responsibility be to their Lord you have given us this because you didn't stand by Monique now they've now they're emboldened right after that then suddenly we get they give uh, Tiffany Haddish 
eight hundred thousand dollars for Netflix. Allows you eight hundred thousand. Hmm. Which, based on their model, Amy Schumer had a movie that hadn't even come out yet that they anticipated would be a big movie, and that was part of why she got what she got. Tiffany Haddish was part of a hundred million dollar movie. You understand? And she's the first black female comedian to host Saturday Night Live, and ah, uh, and she's the hot thing, and it, but she got eight hundred thousand. But Monique told you that would be the case. She told you that. It wasn't about her. You see, but you can only see the 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 world through the prism of what your fake ass uh, has got going on. Instead of seeing it for what she expressed it. She was saying the same about me. And I brought you the video showing you Monique is worth $13 million. She only 500000 It was principle. You see? And what she said has already come to pass. Now, because they know they're not in danger of losing any subscription from, from black people watching fucking Netflix, they can roll this bitch out and give a documentary for this. You did that. You did that. Because if they knew we were united, they would have ran away from this. They would have run far and fast. Run. Because let somebody show up that has been even thought to be anti-Semitic or something, and they're not going to do shit. You think Farrakhan can go get, get a Netflix special? Or if they would call him up and say, Mr. Farrakhan, we'd like for you to have a Netflix special. No, because he's been known as being anti-Semitic. And they don't want to lose the Jewish support and the Jewish subscription and Jewish, 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 Jewish. We should have that same cachet and can. That's something we can have and nobody can affect it or dictate it. That's your own tired black ass refusing to unite. Refusing to do what's right as a people and as an individual. So you've caused this. You've caused this. Because money is what matters. You think that they're so in love with her fucking fake white ass that they just simply must have this? No. They know that your ass is not wrong because you didn't leave when, Mon when one of your own came to you so eloquently and humbly and said, listen, this is what's going on. I need my people to support me. They didn't see the numbers take a dive. I even saw Adele's fake buck tooth black ass. And I gotta go hard on her like that. Because I used to love Adele. But one thing that made me fall out of love with you fast is when you have the moment to do what's right and you don't. I don't give a fuck how long I've known you or how much I loved you. Once I see that, I'm over you. Fuck Adele. Because there she was sitting up on some radio show um, disrespecting Monique. First of all, we know who Monique is, but you'd have to start doing some explaining to make people remember who the fuck Adele is. Because nobody's checking for her ass. Nobody. What has she done in the last 10 years even? I'm sorry, what has she done? <laughs> I think her story really is she was a part of the Queens of Comedy. Was she? Was Adele part of the Queens of Comedy? We're going to find out. Was Adele part of the Queens of Comedy? Queens of Comedy, Adele Gibbons. Yeah, she was part of the Queens of Comedy. You know, so just if you can't stand with the sister, can you just shut your buck tooth ass the fuck up? You see? We're killing our own self, everybody. So don't nobody have no reason to be bitching about this at all. That's what I really want to communicate in this video. Nobody gets to bitch, get bitch about the Rachel Dolezal oh bitch. Nobody. 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 Because you created her and you've allowed this. You have allowed this. You've done this. You've done this. And you've made the whole Netflix thing possible. You've done that. Because you didn't stand with Monique. And not just Monique, but you've shown yourself over the generations not to be a people who will, that they can do anything to you and you will just bitch and still do it. You're worse than a dog. Because there used to be some, one place I used to live, they used to be the cutest little dogs. I think they was like chihuahuas. And they, 
<laughs> they lived on the end from where I lived and they were the cutest thing and they'd always be barking and literally you go up to them and pet them and they'd be arr, arr, as they're licking you and, arr, 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 while they're licking you and showing you love and competing against each other to jump up on you and everything while they're still going arr, arr. <laughs> it's the cutest thing ever <laughs> it's like all right, why are you barking and hurrying at me when you you know but they that's the good that's the perfect metaphor because that's you you bark and bitch while you still give massa your money and still lick up on massa and still everything so thumbs down anybody trying to go all in and be upset about this and all that tell them to fucking go to hell and feel like it send them to the jedi and i'll tell them my damn self because We've created this from our lack of vision, our ignorance, and our lack of unity. This is how you get this. This is how you get this. And by the way, no, no other group of people would, would allow it. They would know we can't do this because she's insulted the African people in this country and indeed around the earth. We can't allow this. To, we can't do it. She's like, she's like, what do they call it? Um, She's like a virus. She's, uh, you know, we, can, we can't touch that. We can't touch that, you know. But they will absolutely touch it because they know your black ass will do nothing but bitch and watch. That's all. That's all. That's all. I can't even be mad because they only get away with what you allow. I always tell you, teach people how to treat you by what you allow. And you allow this. You allow this. And even now, still, <laughs> I won't. We won't see hashtag now net boycott, boycott Netflix or anything, because you're not disciplined. How dare you tell me not to give my money to Massa? And you'd actually save money. This is something that we not even ask you to invest. This is something you would actually save money by doing the right thing, and you still won't do it. You are pathetic, dude. You are. You are. Our people don't deserve any respect. We don't deserve any respect because we're not requiring it and we're not demanding it. We've shown there's no respect required. None required. Only time your bitch ass wants respect is when something's happening directly to your fake ass, just you. And so then, anybody's less, in, less inclined to come to your side. Because you're probably one of the traitors amongst us. Don't help her. Don't help him. Mm -mm. Nah. They probably want the motherfuckers to be selling us out. Fuck them. It's sad. It's beyond sad. It's beyond sad. But like I said, when I first saw this, and I, I, don't even, I don't even know if I need to read the rest of this. I don't think I need to. Well, it's just a paragraph. I don't need to read it. I'm over it. I don't need to. I damn it, don't need to. Because what's the point? For what? I tell you all the time, don't tell me about the house next door that's burning if your ass hasn't went and gotten a hose or some kind of water source. You just came to tell me the house is on fire. Did you know the house is on fire? First thing out of my mouth would be, Are you? did you do something to go help? Oh, but nah, but it's on, well then get the fuck out of my face because you didn't get a hose or nothing. Take your bitch ass. Go. So that's how I feel about this. There's a need. I'm not, I'm not into bitching about stuff that we're not going to do anything about, everybody. I'm not just on earth to bitch and rant about shit. If I'm bitching and ranting about something, it's because I want action on that. That's it. You know, it's like dealing with a child. The only time you really raise your voice at a child is when you need compliance out of them. They're doing something that's unacceptable or dangerous. So you raise your voice to let that child know you mean business. You see that there's going to be action, there's going to be consequence. But I'm not on earth to just bitch and rant. I'm not here for that. You know? So what's the point? What's the point? Because y'all ass will take your bitch ass right now and go watch Netflix after you watch this fucking video. I'm over it. I'm over it. I had some video that I was going to play, but I don't need to. I don't need to. Because for what? For what? 
there's no purpose. There's no purpose. You know, there's no purpose. I did three videos, I think, three or four videos de devoted to the situation with Monique. And I appreciate many, many of you guys' comments. I do. I appreciate you. You know. But I I was also deeply saddened by those voices who act like they don't get it. And it's even worse if they're not acting. Either way, it makes me sick. Wow. You know. like Dr. King said, we won't remember the voices of our enemies. We'll remember the silence of our friends. That's how I feel. That's what I essentially mean, I guess, now. When I'm saying, what fuck what this white devil does, what are we going to do? That's kind of wrapped up in that, too. It's kind of in that, because it's saying, like, um, in this situation, okay, Fuck her. Who cares about this fake, trying to be black, white bitch? What are we gonna do? Cause I won't, I won't, I won't remember or care as much about what she's doing more than I care about the fact that we are not united to shut that whole fucking operation down completely overnight. That's what will keep me up at night. Not this fake white bitch. No. Nah. I tell you every time, everybody, a new day has come, but you have to be new in this new day. And in every new day, you've not been new. And that's why existence and time is passing you by. It's just passing you by because you're focused on the wrong damn things. You get emotional and passionate about the wrong shit. And you're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to make any sacrifice. And I always tell you, if you want something you never had before, you have to do shit you never did before. You're trying to do the same shit and be the same tired ass people that you are, that you've been since, God damn it, 1619. Yeah, I'm not going to put that up that far back because I don't think our people were that trifling that far back. I just don't think that now. You know what I'm saying? But you the same trifling ass damn people that you've been for a very long time. I'll just say that. And that makes me sick. That makes me sick. I'm over it. I'm over it. You know. I bitch and I rant because I love my people and I'm sick and tired and I am my people and I'm sick and tired of us being in the rut that we're in and I understand that there's a way out. But I look around, I don't see nobody fucking trying to do anything. And that makes me sick. That makes me sick. I've never been one to stand aside and look. Ever. I'm not that dude. When you can affect a situation, you should do that. Whatever you have to do. You should do that. And it's the height of uh, patheticness when you can do something and it doesn't you don't have to exert any energy you don't have to make any sacrifice it doesn't cost you any i mean it just you you just my god but you got a commentary on everybody else it's like michael jackson said if you want to make the world a better place take a look at your own fake ass in the mirror and make a change our people really need to listen to that song and make it a part of your life, your existence, and practice that principle. Because we're not getting anywhere as a people. We're not. We're not. We're not. And those same people who would talk shit about Monique and wasn't trying to hold on to they go eight dollars a month for Netflix are the same fucking people that were out at the goddamn movie theater in Daishikis and in all their African shit to support fucking Black Panther. Because NASA told you this was going to be a big blockbuster movie. But if it had been from a black director, from a black studio, and there nothing but black hands on it, it wouldn't have been seen. 
it wouldn't have been seen. It wouldn't have been in wide release. It probably would have made no money at all. And down the list you can go. You are still in love with your fucking master. You are. You are. You are. And for the love of God, don't call yourself conscious or woke if you still exhibit those characteristics. You, I'm telling you, you are not. I'm telling you, you are not. You are not. You are not. And you're definitely not woke or conscious if you're still wrapped up in that white man's religion of Christianity. Because that's a contradiction. That's like saying, I'm not suicidal as you fucking take the machete across your fucking carotid artery. I thought you said you weren't suicidal. You see, because people that are conscious and woke understand that, that is some bullshit and it is an anthrax and a poison upon the souls of our people and would never have anything to do with it at all. At all. It's a contradiction. That's just the damn truth. People that are conscious and woke are not Christians. Contemplate that. So, that puts us amongst the warrior class, you see. We are the activists. We are the martyrs. We're the ones who are ready to give it all up and go get what's ours. You've never been that. Remember one of the videos that I brought you a long time ago was the um, the letter from King Leopold the second or third one of them to the to the missionaries in the Congo. It was everything. In fact, that's how we'll end the video. That's what we'll do. <clears throat> we'll end on that. Maybe if Massa says it to you, it'll have more weight. Let's find that. Now, <clears throat> I specifically, I want everybody to listen to this, but I specifically want black Christians to absorb this because it's so important, everybody. Listen, I've said to you before, if you eat broccoli and that's just you, that's fine. But if you eat broccoli and it's affecting your character, your moral compass, your lack of unity, your lack of activism and willingness to act, to strike back, and yes, when needed, to be violent, to seek revenge and recompense, then I would bitch about broccoli. I would say this is toxic to our people. I bitch about this because of what it does and what it has done and continues to do to our people. This is not a religious argument for me. It's not a religious contest. It's just not. Even with it not being the word of God, even with that, if it wasn't and didn't have the effect on our people that it has, it still would be no need for me to, to bitch about it. This is a central problem, everybody, at the root of the character and the morality of our people in this nation. It's at the center of it. The center. Again, it's like Harriet Tubman said, I could have led many more people away from slavery if they had only known they were slaves. And when you have someone like myself, who is your brother who loves you, telling you this, a half-sane person would say, at least let me go and look at what the Jedi is saying. Let me just go look. Let me just go look. If somebody comes to me and says, you know, your house is on fire, I'm at least going to get up and go check it. I don't see it being on fire, but let me go look. Let me look 
and and also go outside and look maybe, maybe my house is on fire but what happens with the black christian is the moment you and 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 i don't know any christians that have done any study of this doctrine they don't study it they don't study it and you all have bible study every week at any church there's never the history of this go to your next bible study which i hope you won't go to after you see this video but go to your next bible study and ask whoever's leading the damn bible study the pastor or whoever whatever saint is leading it ask them when are we going to start studying the history and the origins of this ask them why don't we talk about the fact that all the white Christian theologians and scholars, not Muslims, not Jews, not Buddhists, not Harvard Krishners, not anybody, that all the white Christian theologians and scholars have all proclaimed that the Bible is not a divine work. That means it is not from God. It's not. It's not from God. It's just not. But the central part of it is it doesn't require anything from you. And in this context, with this, I'm bringing this once again to show you that it is exactly what I have represented it to be. And that is, it is a contrived thing to control your character. But why this is so important? is because not only did you hear from the white devil, which apparently that's more effective for you, because apparently your brother telling you it is not enough. Not only is it from the white devil, but they're outlining in language you can absolutely understand exactly what I'm telling you. It's not ambiguous, it's very clear. It's very, very clear. And this is written in 1883. And this was written to the missionaries in the Congo. You see, Christians always have to go out and, 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 and trying to recruit people into this doctrine. Jews never knock on your door with the Torah saying, come, let me tell you about Judaism. Muslims never walk, knock on your door with the Quran saying, come, let me tell you about Islam. And yet Islam is the second largest religion on the earth and it is growing faster than every other religion combined, period. And it is on pace to be the number one religion on earth as it has been prophesied by the one that created you and me. It's not from the Jedi. Do you understand? They also like they gotta come and recruit you. Gotta recruit you. Come with that grin. <laughs> Wow. And I've shared with you in the past that there are, are any of the nations around the world, especially in Africa, but any of the nations around the world where they, uh, they have a policy in America, certainly in, on the continent, where if they're sending you any uh, uh, medical or food aid or anything like that, one of the conditions for you to receive that aid is you must allow in Christian missionaries. Ask yourself why. Not because they're interested in those people being holy or because they're interested in their salvation and their afterlife destination and all those things. They do it because it sucks the fucking life out of you and makes you a mummy. That's why they do it. There's no other reason. And any place that they don't allow that, then they demonize that place and there's problems. We see that even in Somalia, uh, they, they're having great famine and this isn't their first one. And they're not allowing the UN to give them any food and they're, they're very scarce and all these things. Why? Because Somalia is 100% Muslim. <laughs> Muslim. They villainize portions of Nigeria giving you Boko Haram and all of it. Boko Haram are Muslims, homie. Oh, yes. So, this is a doctrine for white people. It's from them, for them. 
and it is a poison on everybody else, but particularly our people. And this outlines it. Now, this is he wrote this to the uh, he was the Belgian king writing this to the colonial missionaries that were going into the Congo. They still have the Congo conquered to this day. I've told you that's where coltan comes from. I'm sure they didn't know about coltan then because there's no such thing as electronics. But coltan, homie, without coltan, you don't have a cell phone, you don't have a laptop, you don't have a, a tablet, you don't have any computers, you definitely don't have, I said, a cell phone, you don't have televisions, you don't have keyboards, you don't have anything that electronics. Because one thing that we know about electronics, you got to keep them cool. And that's one of the functions of coltan. Do you understand? You uh, think about it. Why would the one who's taken everything from you, your language, your religion, your humanity, your music, your history, every single thing about you, why would he turn around and want you to have a relationship with God? Why? These are questions you should be asking yourself. You should be asking yourself that. This is one of the ways you conquer a people. You take their God and give them yours. Remember that 67% of all the slaves brought to these shores were Muslims. They didn't hand you this Christian vomit until 1821. Hmm? And you see the date on this is 1883. Because it worked so well on your ass here they worked it in the Congo in 1883. You see? Wow. And to this day, I'll say this one more time and we'll get into it. To this day, most African melanated people on planet Earth, no matter where they are, are Muslims. Are Muslims. The only place where this vomit dominates our people is right here home. 86% of African people in this asshole of Satan are under that Christian vomit. And you see the result of that. You are everything that this is going to describe to you that you are. Everything. Reverends, fathers, and dear compatriots, the task that is given to fulfill is very delicate and requires much tact. We will go certainly to evangelize, but your evangelization must inspire, above all, Belgium interests. Hmm? Islam don't, don't, is not in their interest because it connects you directly to the Creator, has you fearing only the Creator, has you living a code of life that has been designed by the Creator. There would be no colonization because you would have fought back. There would have been no slavery because you would have fought back. Well, we fought back. I'm saying once we got here, once they gave you the Christian vomit, they made it a lot easier for them. Oh, it just it made it a cakewalk. With Islam, you wouldn't have police brutality because you'd have a race of people that the moment you kill one of us, we definitely come in to kill you. And we fear only the one that created us. Not anybody with a gun or a badge or a fucking uniform. An eye for an eye. That's what the creator has designated for mankind. An eye for a damn eye. Period. Um, your principal objective in our mission in the Congo is to never is never to teach the niggers to know God. Never to teach them to know God. So they're giving you the Christian vomit, which I've told you a billion times is not connected to anything holy. It's not connected to God. It's not from God. It's not the word of God. And instead they've given you God is your friend, but it's his son, which God don't have no son. He has no sons, no offspring, and no partners, and no equals. So the Muslim only worships and prays and references the one that created all things. 
Well, they got you praising some man who didn't die for nobody but himself. Um, it is never to teach the niggers to know God. This they know already. Because like I say, we already knew God and, and we would have known Jesus because all the prophets of which Jesus was one were known to us. Of course. And remember the Quran has been on earth for nearly 1500 years. Of course, we, of course the, our people knew who Jesus was. But not as the son of God, not as God come as a man, not as somebody who came to die for everybody's sin and all humanity and all the bullshit. Even in your own damn scripture, this is what kills me. It's you don't even. It, this is why I know you don't do any study. This is why I don't have any respect when I speak about it. No respect, because it's willful ignorance. Because you can know anything now. Willful ignorance. And it tells you in your own scripture that Jesus was sent only to the Israelites, the tribes of Israel. That's who he was sent to. Nobody else. Nobody else. Nobody else was on the on the list and on the menu and no. Um, <clears throat> so they must never know God. Uh, this they already know. They speak and submit to Mungu, one uh, Zambi, one Zakomba, and what else I don't know. They know that to kill, to sleep with someone else's wife, to lie, to insult, is bad. Have courage. Have courage to admit it. You are not going to teach them what they, are, what they know already. Your essential role is to facilitate the task of administrators and industrials. So... In other words, the, the, the managers and people that were going to come in to take the resource, you're supposed to facilitate so that they have an easy time. You know, people are going to run everything. Your, your essential role is to facilitate the task of administrators and industrials, which means you will go to interpret the gospel in the way it will be the best to protect your interests in that part of the world. So you think they would do anything different here? For these things, you have to keep watch on disinterest, disinteresting uh, our savages from the richness, from the riches that is plenty in their underground. So the, the places is rich with resources and that's what they wanted so you want them to be disinterested in that they do this all the time listen when they first discovered oil in the in the Saudi desert the Arabs didn't know what they had white devil goes in and that's how you get OPEC and all the bullshit to this day they made some bullshit ass deal with them that they never keep their word on I'm not going to get all into it, but I'm saying, but this is their model. They do this all the time, everywhere. You see, it, but with the Arabs, they couldn't use uh, the Christian vomit. They'd use other tactics. Um, to, to avoid that, to avoid that they get interested in it, in other words, the resources that they have in their land, and make you, and make you murderous competition and dream one day to overthrow you. In other words, this will tamp them down so they don't get murdered and want to overthrow you. Hmm? What do you do to this day? You march and protest and bitch and 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 and, and chant. <laughs> Your knowledge of the gospel will allow you to find texts ordering and encouraging your followers to love poverty. Like Quote, happier are the poor because they will inherit the heaven. And it's very difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. <laughs> While they steal all your riches and go off with your riches. You see, 
And what's that other bullshit they saying, the Christians? Amazing fucking grace, I'm over it. That saved a wretch like me. <sighs> when did we become a wretch? Wow. You're not, um, you have to detach from them and make them disrespect everything which gives courage to affront us. In other words, to fight us back or to challenge us in any way. Fast forward to this day. You see, why weren't we out on a massive manhunt to find George Zimmerman and anybody else that struck down one of ours unjustly? You see, any of them. For it's George Zimmer and these motherfuckers in uniform because of this. This. If you didn't outnumber us, if you weren't the 86% and 86% were people like me, you'd be living a vastly different existence in this bitch right now. Martin came with that love your enemy bullshit. Mandela came with that m m love your enemy bullshit. Had we been following Malcolm, we'd have a vastly different existence right now. It all goes back to this Christian vomit. It just fucking does. Um, I make reference to their mystic system and their war fetish. War protection, which they pretend not to want to abandon and you must do everything in your power to make it disappear. Our willingness to go to war, our fight. You understand? You gotta make that disappear. Your action will be directed essentially to the younger ones, for they won't revolt when the commendations of the priest is contradictory, when the recommendation of their priest is contradictory to their parents' teachings. The children have to learn to obey what the missionary recommends. Who is the father of their soul? Just like today, y'all go to them fucking Christian pastors. Well, my patent, we went and, and what y'all fucking call that bullshit? We fellowship with our pastor. He's the same dude. <laughs> He's the same dude. Nothing has changed. That's why I was telling you yesterday is today and today is yesterday. Nothing has changed. Nothing. And they're still using this bullshit on you right now. Um, to obey the missionary, uh, what the missionary recommends, who is the father of their soul. Hmm? Our pastor told us we need to um, clean up our credit and get credit and all the bullshit which God is against completely and all the other stuff that your pastors recommend. You must singularly, singularly insist on their total submission and obedience. Avoid developing the spirit in the schools. Teach students to read, not to reason. So right now, you bitch that, you know, they, they, we just ain't got no good schools. And this, that's part of the plan, everybody. You're not supposed to have any good schools. You understand? Teach them to read and not to reason. So don't teach them not to have fucking babies out of wedlock. And as teenagers, don't they should know how to start a business and write a check and balance a checkbook. You understand what I'm saying? Teach them to read and not to reason. So when your kids come out of school, I don't care what kind of grade point average they got, they're educated fools. They don't know anything. There's no morality being taught. There's no character being taught. They just want to teach you how to be a good citizen. That's it. Teach them how to read and not to reason. That's still in place. <clears throat> there, there, dear, dear patriots, are some of the principles that you must apply. You will find many other books which will be given to you at the end of this conference. Evangelize the niggers so that they stay forever in submission to the white colonialists so they never revolt against the restraints they are undergoing. Recite every day, happy are those who are weeping because the kingdom of God is for them. 
This is right now, dude. Right now. Wow. Listen, if you're half a thinker, and my voice is out, y'all. If you're half a thinker, I need to get something to drink. If you're even half a thinker, then one thing that people that uh, are brilliant or at least intellectual, one thing you do is you never reject information. You always receive that and then you go follow it up for yourself. A fool receives information and just recites it if it's the gospel. And that's what you Christians do with that damn doctrine. You've not done any study. I always trip up any Christian I've ever talked to when I say, and by the way, I never have to mention that I'm a Muslim. And I never have to mention the Quran or Islam. I don't need to. I can slaughter you with your own doctrine. And one thing that I do, of many, is I say to any Christian, I go, tell me what, tell me, I get that dumb look on my face. Tell me, um, oh, I just can't remember, what language did Jesus speak? I wish I could remember. I'm faking. Because I'm waiting on a fake Christian ass. And A, they usually never know, or B, they come up with exactly the wrong answer. They start with Hebrew, and they start with other bullshit, and none of it's true. Now, the fact is that Jesus spoke a language called Aramaic. It's a sister language to Arabic. And the very name Jesus is something foreign. Because at the time of any of the revelations, and even today, in the Hebrew language, there's no J and there's no G. Forget religious doctrine. We're talking about etymology. We're talking about hard fact. And if you're going to call yourself a damn Christian, you should know this. You should know this. But you don't, and that's why you're a Christian. Because you haven't done any work. You haven't done any work. His name was Yeshua. And his name for the Most High was Allah. If you call yourself baptized, sanctified, and anointed, and called, and all that bullshit, then you sh and you have a personal relationship with Christ, which makes me vomit. Nobody has a personal relationship with Christ. No one. Then you should personally know that his name, that the name he used for the Most High, would have been Allah, and you should never use the word Jesus to refer to him. You're not a Christian. Convert always the blacks by using the whip. Keep their women in nine months of, of submission to work freely for us. In other words, keep them pregnant to have more babies that will come and work for us. Hmm? Keep their women in nine months of submission to work freely for us. Force them to pay you in sign of recognition goats, chicken, or eggs every time you visit their villages and make sure that niggers never become rich. So right now, all your NBA players, all your NFL people, all the other bullshit, all the people in power, everybody your name's got money, Nobody is handing any money back to the African community. No one. No one. We don't have a single mall built by African people in this fucking nation. We don't have a single national chain, food chain or national gas station or na any damn thing. A grocery store. A thrift store in this bitch. Nothing. Nothing. The niggers... Make sure that the niggers never become rich. Sing, or, or yes, yeah, sing every, or yes, yeah, sing every day that it is impossible for the rich to enter heaven. Make them pay tax each week at Sunday mass. That's your tithing in all of it. Hmm? And then black Christians go a step further. They, not only do they give way more than they fucking ten percent, but then they gotta give love offerings to the pastor and all of it. <laughs> or some other uh, ministry, that word sends me directly into fucking ICU to be ventilated. I'm over it. 
they put the word mission uh, uh, ministry behind anything and it, that's supposed to make it holy well you know we have our stripper ministry I can't I can't <laughs> I can't I can't and I don't speak about this in fuzzy terms everybody because I think that when you speak harshly about anything it sticks to the brain it sticks to the brain you know it's like with a child if you if you are too nice about something important then they take they 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 think that they don't take you seriously and sometimes they try to usurp your authority you know sometimes you just gotta that's what I mean right there boom deal with it you see it's more effective it sticks um especially if you piss them off you see so you can either hate me I don't care this is not about me. This is not about me. I tell you this all the time. I'm not even on this damn platform for me. I'm already at this level of understanding and knowledge. My purpose for you, you even seeing me in front of you right now is to share this with you that you'll get off your ass and make change in your own soul and in your own character and your own life. Um, use the money supposed supposed for the poor to build flourishing business centers what do your fake christian pastors do to this day they take your money and we never see them it's not for the poor they may do a couple little things here and there just to say that they did something but they're living high on the hog in mansions <clears throat> and they're driving bentley's and wearing you know kenneth cole and armani and versace and all of it and it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Um, to build flourishing business centers, institute institute a confessional system. Because y'all tell all your business to the fucking Christian church. How many times do I go to church? Because I still go to church with people. Somebody invite me to church, I go. It's um, bulletproof and shit they gonna say that's gonna affect me at fucking all. But every time you go up in there, they, we want our visitors to... <laughs> we gonna ask our visitors to stand and introduce themselves. They're just trying to get in your business. I don't stand and I definitely don't put anything in their fucking plate. I don't. Oh, the gentleman there, would, would you like to stand for... Would you like to stand before us? But stand, oh, but that, stand before us, before us. <laughs> No, the fuck I don't before you. Okay, don't say that. But I'm like, no, I'm 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 fine. I'm just an observer today. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. Uh, institute a confessional system which allows you to be good detectives, denouncing any black that has a different consciousness contrary to that of the decision maker. You go into your damn church on Sunday and ask them anything that I'm telling you to ask, they ask, and you're going to have a heated argument. Ask them why is do they talk about the Holy Spirit when they talk about Jesus? When in John 16, he says he has to go so the comforter can come. Actually, he says the messenger of truth. He's describing a person. Ask them how could, why would he have to leave if it's already here with him? But he can't, but he has to go so it can come. And it's describing human attributes. He will come, the messenger of truth, and he will guide you into all truth. He will speak only that which he has heard. He will not be presenting his own ideas. Huh? And so on. You're John 16, 12 through something you're not asking any questions you're not you're not um ask them what language jesus spoke how about that just ask your pastor hmm? ask them how is it that arab christians use the word allah to describe the most high when here in this country, they got you saying, well, Allah or whoever. No, bitch. 
you say that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that he died for your ass on a cross and everything, that he committed suicide essentially for you, you should know everything about him. If I get stranded on the side of the road, you show up and give me a, a quart of oil or a, a, some water or you take me to get, I'm going to at least, can I get your phone number? Tell me your name, something. Um, what's that song y'all sing? What a friend we have in Jesus. I'm over it. I'm going to vomit during the video. Moving on. Um, so you can't have any dissenters, you see with a consciousness contrary to that of the decision maker. Teach the niggers to forget their heroes and to adore only ours. Where was your black ass at over the damn weekend seeing Black Panther to adore our heroes and not theirs? <sighs> Never present a chair to a black that comes to visit you. Don't give him more than one cigarette. Never invite him for dinner, even if he gives you a chicken every time you arrive at his house. I want to get to the good stuff, you guys. Um, I think we're going into it. The above speech, which shows the real intention of the Christian vomit uh, in Africa, was exposed to the world by Mr. Big Word, my grandmother used to say, <laughs> by Mr. Big Word, who was born in the Congo in 1915 and who in 1935 was working in the Congo, bought a second-hand fake-ass Bible from a Belgian priest who forgot the speech was in the Bible. I always tell you, water and truth are the same for me, everybody. They both have a way of finding their way through a crack. We should note that all missionaries carry out and still carry out that mandate. Hmm? That's their purpose. We are only lucky to have found King Leopold's articulation of the aim of all Christian imperialist missionaries to Africa. And two, even the African converts who today manage their older churches in Africa the priests, bishops, archbishops, cardinals, etc., of the Roman and Protestant sects, and especially also those who evangelize born again Christianity bullshit, still serve the same mandate. Yesterday is today, today is yesterday, and shit change. It's like I always tell you. Which is why they demonize African gods and ang anglicize African names, anglicize. Anglo, white, Anglo, white devil, Anglo, Anglicize, you see, Anglicize African names and drop the names of the African deities which from part, which form part of African names, you see, so African deities, like if you have, um, you know, um, Rasulullah, you know, um, or, um, uh, you know, anything that, that would have, Abdullah, you know, um, any of those, you see, um, is what they're referring to as an example for you when they say, uh, and drop the names of African deities which form part of African names and still attack and, de and demolish the African shrines that have managed to survive. Three, those Africans who voluntarily convert to the Christian vomit before, who did convert before the colonial conquest, such as Alfonso, no, Afonso, one of the Bakongo in the 15th century, probably did not discern the purpose of the brand of Christianity that was supplied to them, which was probably why they fell easy prey to the missionaries and the white traders and pirates who followed them. You see, they didn't discern it. You haven't discerned it. You've not discerned it. And it's so funny because I always hear Christians talking about, well, you know, so-and-so was given the, uh, the spirit of the, y'all got all these fucking spirits and ghosts. I can't even keep up. It's like the fucking exorcist up in this bitch. 
but you don't discern. I was saying, you also got the spirit of discernment. You've not discerned this because I'm not a Christian because I've discerned it. I know what it is. I know from whence it comes. You understand? I know all the contradiction that it is. Period. And you can't say Jesus and God are one if Jesus doesn't know everything there is to fucking know. And when he's asked, do you know when the last day is? He goes, it's not known, it's not known even to me. And when you ask, and when you ask, like, what language did he speak? It's actually kind of a, a rhetorical question. It's, it's really a trick question because it's one that shouldn't have an answer. Somebody should look at you crazy. Because the bottom line is, if he didn't speak the, every language on the fucking earth, that means he wasn't God. Because God is all-knowing, all-wise. There's nothing that's not known to him. The Quran says, not a leaf falls from a tree without his knowledge. And he was aware of every pebble of sand on the beach. Allah Akbar. You don't know him. You don't. You don't. But it, right there, they didn't discern it. And that's why they fell easy prey to the missionaries and the white, and the white traders and pirates who followed them. <clears throat> but their Japanese, hear this, hear this now, but their Japanese counterparts probably did discern the game, even without access to some of the variants, even without access to some of the versions of Leopold's letter. But even if the Japanese shoguns did not intuit or know what Leopold, even if they didn't know what Leopold makes explicit, in other words, everything that we've learned up to now, what he's saying this will do, even if they didn't know that, just intuitively, they certainly realized the danger of Japanese converts to Christianity forming a fifth column within the Japanese society and state, a fifth column loyal to their co-religionists in Europe. Now, why is that important? Because you're like a you're like a, 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 a fifth column. You kind of are as as black Christians because you are outside of what is what is necessary and conducive and natural to us as a people. It's you. You're the ones that can be counted on to have a black Christian or black Republican sitting up on MSNBC defending fucking Trump and anybody else. You or any sellout, any coon, we've, anybody we've ever called a coon, anybody, anybody, Charles Barkley, Roland Martin, go down the list, Ben Carson, um, Larry Eld, anybody, all of them are you, 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 you. Um, to rid Japan of that danger, and they're using these strong words, danger, to, to, to rid Japan of that danger in the late 16th century, the shoguns began to began their expulsion of Portuguese and Spanish missionaries on the grounds that they were forcing Japanese to become Christian, teaching their, their disciples to wreck temples, take and trading slaves, taking and trading slaves, etc. Then in 1596, it became clear to the Japanese authorities that Christianization had been a prelude to Spanish conquest of other lands. In other words, they realized they come in with the Christian vomit and they conquer you. You see, that's what they found out. And it quickly dawned on them that a fifth column loyal to Rome and controlled by the priests of a foreign religion was a clear and present danger to the sovereignty of a new unified Japan. Soon after, the persecution and suppression of Japanese Christians began. Early in the 17th century, sensing the danger from a creed that taught obedience to foreign priests rather than the Japanese authorities, all missionaries were ordered to leave, get the fuck out, and all Japanese were ordered to register at the Buddhist temple. I'm not mad at them. Because I tell you all the time, sometimes I'm a, I'm a big believer that sometimes you have to make people do what's good for them if they can't do it on their own. You got to get your ass. 
It's like a child. Get, get your ass in and take it back because I told you to. I don't want to get your shit. Because you know it's good for them. You see? I'm a big believer in that. Take your ass and register the Buddhist temple. When Japanese Christians took part in a rebellion, foreign priests were executed. The Spanish were expelled. And Japanese Christians were forbidden to travel abroad. After another rebellion, largely by Christians, was put down, the Japanese Christians were suppressed and their descendants were put under close state surveillance for centuries thereafter. Uh, and by the way, to this day, they're not conquered. To this day, you see, in the 1640s, all Japanese suspected of even being a Christian were ruthlessly exterminated. Thus did Japan, by 1650, save itself from the first European attempt to mentally subvert, conquer, and colonize it. They start with the Christian vomit, everybody. The African captives, that's you, who were taken abroad and enslaved, and the Africans at home, after the European conquest, having already been forcibly deprived of their autonomy, that means just their own sovereignty and their independence, were in no political position to resist the fucking Christianization. Thus, the Christianity still practiced in all of the African American diaspora just as that in the African homeland since the start of the 20th century continues to carry out the Leopold mandate. Yesterday is today, today is yesterday, I always tell you. Hence, for example, whereas the white born, a, uh, the white born again of the USA when in the U.S. Navy ships in World War II saying, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition, the attitude of the African-born again converts today is best summed up as praise the Lord and lie down for the manna. That's you, black Christian. Weak. Weak. We, the weakest amongst us. And that's why I say black Christians are the cause of, of most of our predicament now in this nation. You're the ones that gave us integration even. By default. You see. Thanks to a century or more of the Leopold mandated missionary mind control. African. A century or more. All right, African Christians are not activists self-helping, economically engaged, politically resolute, let alone militant. That's you. That's you. I just don't know why black folks can't come together because you don't have a code of life to live by. A finite rule of principles that simply cannot be transgressed because that's what the Muslim has. That's what the Muslim has. That's what the Muslim has. You understand? We must do for one another, seeking the glory of God. You can't come together. They're not activists, self-helping. Huh? You're definitely not activists. Because what you consider an activist is not activism. They're not activists. They're not self-helping. That means not just you helping yourself, but you helping your people and us helping each other as a group. You see? That's why all your NFL players and NBA players and shit, we don't have nothing to show for their wealth. Your Oprah's, your Tyler Perry's, your Bill Cosby's, keep going down the list. Your Jay-Z's and Beyonce's and all of it. Hmm? They're not self-helping. They're not economically engaged. Huh? Because we don't got no banks. We were ready to hand over our dollar to somebody else very quickly and look for a reason to hold our dollar from each other. You're not politically resolute. I don't vote. 
let alone militant. I've said to you a million times, I said, find me a, Christ, a black Christian on this platform that speaks the way I do and bring them before me. I started doing YouTube videos in 2014. The shit still hasn't happened. And it won't because they don't exist. They don't. They don't. I've also told you you can't be conscious or woke if you are a Christian. That is a contradiction because people are conscious and woke, understand that, that doctrine is some bullshit and would never have anything to do with it. So if you are a Christian, stop calling yourself conscious or woke because you are not. I'm telling you, you are not. You're still in a coma. Hence, they're putting up with all manner of mistreatment and exploitation by their misusers, white and black. The most that the most they are disposed to do to their to their misusers is to admonish them to fear God. <laughs> well, Not kick their ass and eye for an eye, do unto you as you did to me, and all the bullshit. No, no. Fear God. Which, as one protester's miserable placard read in last week's Lagos demonstration against the latest of the murderous fuel prices, the, the murderous fuel price hikes by the OBJ uh, misgovernment. So I guess that was happening. The writer of this is saying, uh, a week before this was written or whatever um, that in Lagos, Nigeria in, in, in response to this fuel price hike fuel, fuel price hike somebody was out there with a damn placard and said read God or fear God the idea of an uprising to tame their, mis, their misrulers is alien to the religiously opiated frame of mind of the Nigerians and that goes not just for Nigerians but all y'all black Christian asses but I'll read that again the idea of an uprising to tame your abusers and misusers this devil is foreign it, two wrongs don't make a right we'll say the fake ass Christian the Muslim is screaming Allahu Akbar as we take your fucking head off foreign it, foreign to, I love this, is, is alien to the religiously opiated, religiously opiated, opiate, and opiate is, a, you know, it attaches to certain centers of the brain, uh, heroin, um, you know, these, these uh, pills that white people are do dropping dead for Oxycontin and all of it, the religiously opiated frame of mind of the Nigerians. I'm just going to delete the word Nigerians and say the religiously opiated mind of the black Christian. You are religiously opiated. You understand? The reason or the lesson in the contrast between an African I'm sorry the lesson in the contrast between an Africa that the Christian missionaries brainwashed and subverted and a Japan where the brainwashing and subversion was forcibly prevented is stark and clear. What then must Africans of today begin to do to save themselves from brainwashing by their white devil world enemies here on earth? That is the question. I love this. I love this. I love this. You see, I love this. And so when you look at it in the context of this whore, you see, again, it's a people who are, who are, are vulnerable out of ignorance, willful ignorance now, willful ignorance, willful, you see, willful. So you allow this bitch to come into the fold, be given legitimacy. She's given refuge. We are a people that should be out dragging somebody every fucking day damn near. 
based on everything that, that has been and is being done to us. But unfortunately, you have to fight this enemy and you have to try and fight your ignorant ass. Because until you come out of your, your, your religiously opi opiated state, we can't get through. We can't get through. Nine people get killed in South Carolina and you have big ass grown black men. The first images I saw was big burly black men out in a fucking prayer circle. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm just over it. Wow. If you don't hear this and then go and do your own study, study of that Christian vomit, then you do continue to deserve whatever happens to you in this society. Doesn't matter what it is. You deserve it. You deserve it. And now this bitch is trying to introduce another, not just her, but them, the enemy, is trying to introduce another race to try and wash you out. And it's very easy because you have no allegiance to yourselves. No allegiance. You see? Wow. I'm over it. Anyway, this um, this all ties into this because if you had a code of life to live by, if you were living by the true word of God, you would have unity as a people, and you wouldn't need any explanations or 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 background or anything once you know it's one of yours that's been disrespected you would support that so our sister could come out and say look family Netflix has done X Y and Z I need y'all to support me and so we hear that we just we just immediately support done done won't we'll ask no questions I told you um, I guess it was last year sometime um, they burned down a mosque in, um, I think it was in Texas. Anyways, they had put up a GoFundMe. They looked for $80,000. There's 1.8 billion Muslims on the planet. And within 24 hours, we had over a million dollars. Because every single Muslim that knew about it did exactly what I did. As soon as I saw it, I immediately went and got my coin and went online and donated my money. It's the house of Allah, period. Done. They can burn down as many mosques as they want to. We'll do the exact same thing every single time. We'll do it. Every single time. There's no question. There's no question. There's no question. You see? Um, years ago, when I uh, opened my first store, um, there's this slat wall. You've seen it, but I don't know how to describe it to you. And I don't have my phone with me. But um, I'm too fat and lazy to get up in the living room and get it. <laughs> but one of my Muslim brothers is a contractor. He does multi-million dollar jobs. You know. And this slat wall, and the sheets are very heavy. And I had four by eight sheets, you know. The, you know. And I called him up. I said, brother, salam alaikum, you know. This is so-and-so. And you know, I need. I opened a store. I opened a retail store, and I need. I have some slat wall that I need put up. Oh, mashallah, brother. When did you need it? I go. Alhamdulillah, I needed it yesterday, brother. He goes. I can meet you in an hour. Dropped everything he was doing, and came to me. With all his stuff. Before he enters my store, he, he recites the name of of Allah. Steps in with his right foot. Comes in. Does all his measuring and ah ha ha, puts up all my sheets of slat wall. Brother, is this good for you? Oh, mashallah, brother. Jazakallah khair, alhamdulillah. You know, he buys me something cold to drink and we part ways with our this hug kiss thing that we do. And he leaves, bidding me well. 
no money ch exchanges hands simply because we are Muslims simply because we are Muslims so if, as I've said before if you can't be bothered to be a, <clears throat> to be a Muslim unfortunately you should at least be open to adopting the way that we live our lives and particularly when it comes to how we interact with one another our whole situation in this country will change overnight 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 so that we would have boycotted Netflix for Monique and then they would not be willing to do this thing with this whore because they'd say no no we could lose our black dollar we could lose our black subscribers to Netflix so you're too inflammatory and we just simply can't do it we can't but they're not in any danger of that because what you are not where was it because you are not uh, oh where is it when it talks about you are not activist you are not politically uh, resolute you are not you know all of that just that I can't find it now but that speaks to it you see you can't be counted on for a damn thing you are the problem and you're the biggest problem because like I say 86 percent of our people in this nation are under that bullshit did you know there's literally 40,000 denominations of Christianity if you're a Christian you didn't know that you're not a Christian and you prove my point that's why I have no respect for Christians because only people that are Christians are people that don't know what it is if you see somebody, if you see somebody drinking something you know is cyanide you're not going to say wonderful things about them. You're going to say they're either a fucking stupid or they must not know there's cyanide in that. They must not know that cyanide. They must not know. And maybe it says in big letters cyanide. And you go, they must not. They must, I know they haven't read it or they can't read. It says cyanide on it. That's how this is for me. And should be for you. But you're not interested because somebody put you in a pew when you were knee high to a grasshopper told you Christ was your personal savior and you not question that at all I brought you last year sometime or the year before a video about the rapper Loon he's even in uh, Tony Braxton's uh, freeway song up the freeway um, y'all know the song he does the rap part in that and he said he had been a Christian since he was little or he his mom just taken him to church and then one time he realized that it said that Jesus keep praying Speaking of praying, I gotta go pray. <laughs> he's like, Jesus, keep praying. He's doing all this praying. Who is he praying to? So he went to his pastor and said, You know, it says Jesus is doing all this praying. Who's he praying to? And the pastor said, Boy, you don't believe Jesus is your, your personal Lord and Savior? And he's just like shutting down. But well, he was just a kid then. He didn't know anything about Islam. But he said, After that, I was over Christianity because I knew whoever Jesus was praying to, that was the dude. That was the dude. That was the dude. And I never hear Christians even talk about this, you know. Like Jesus used to pray. <laughs> we pray the way he prayed to this day. You don't. You don't. We don't. The Muslim is the one that prays the way Jesus and all the other prophets prayed. It's the Muslims, homie. It's the Muslim. It's not the Christian. That's not up for debate. But these are things that you should know. You see? Don't tell me you're an airline pilot if you don't know what fucking aerodynamics is. Don't tell me. Don't tell me you're an airline pilot if you don't know the difference between a Cessna and a 787 or a 747. You're not a pilot. You're just damn it not. And I'm not getting on your damn plane. So... I end this where I began is to say that you are the ones that have caused this Rachel bullshit. It was black Christians who allowed her to be in the position at the NAACP because they're all Christians. 
So it's all of our fucking downfall is coming from black Christians. So not only are you ignorant, but you're a huge liability to our people and a danger, proven danger to yourselves and the rest of us. I can't. I can't. So I leave it here, everybody. Will this be the thing now that you will finally go and fucking delete your damn subscription subscription to Netflix? Will, will, it will, is this enough now? Since your sister coming and telling you so eloquently that she needs your support wasn't enough for you? Hmm. I'm over it. I gotta go pray. This is the Jedi.